Every table saw has one of these removable throat plates and these metal or plastic throat plates make it easy to access the blade for blade changes and they work fairly well for general cutting. But they have an overly wide slot in them to provide enough clearance for the blade to be tipped to an angle. And oftentimes that wide slot doesn't provide enough support for the wood right up next to the blade. So the wood splinters out on the bottom face during cutting. And that can be a problem when you're trying to make fine cuts. Now if you want to reduce that tear out around the blade, one of the best ways is to make a zero clearance throat plate like this. It's got a narrow slot that fits tight around the blade to support what you're cutting right up to the teeth. And these throat plates are equally helpful when you're using a specialty blade that makes wider cuts, like a dado set, box joint cutters, or this miter fold dado set from Rockler. Zero clearance throat plates are easy to make for table saws with common oval shaped throat plates like this. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make one. You can make throat plates from a variety of different materials, but you want them to be strong, flat, and easy to cut. Rockler sells throat plate blanks made of phenolic. It's a slick, hard, synthetic material that'll last for a long time. But good quality plywood, ordinary MDF, or even a piece of stable hardwood like this poplar will work fine too. I think the easiest way to make them is to start with something that's the same thickness as the depth of your saw's throat plate opening down to these tabs that support it. Or start with something that's overly thick to begin with because you can always trim it down on the back side to get a flush fit. I'm going to use this piece of 3 quarter inch Baltic birch plywood. Start by cutting a blank that's a little larger than your master throat plate all around. Now trace the throat plate's shape onto the blank and cut it out at a bandsaw or with a jigsaw. Either way, cut just outside your layout line by about a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. You can trim off the rest of this waste using a bearing guided flush trim bit and your master throat plate as a template. And we'll do that over at the router table. To do that, use a few strips of double sided carpet tape to stick the face of your master throat plate down to your blank. Press the two together to make sure they're firmly adhered. Now raise the router bit so the guide bearing will roll along the edge of the master throat plate and route away the extra waste. Feed the two counterclockwise against the bit to make the cut. Now separate the two and clean off the tape and see if your new throat plate fits the opening. Mine fits a little bit tight here. And if yours does too, sand the edges slightly to improve the fit. Then, drill a hole through your new throat plate to make it easier to get in and out of the saw. Now my new throat plate is still thicker than the original, so I need to trim off some of this material on the bottom face so that it'll sit flush in my table saw's opening. And to do that, I'm going to flip the new plate upside down and set it into position, and then trace all around the plate with my pencil. This is the amount I need to remove and I'm going to do that over at the router table. If the tabs on your table saw's throat plate opening are a half inch wide or less, you can use a rabbiting bit like this to trim away the waste because most rabbiting bits will cut to a half an inch wide. Just raise the bit to meet your depth of cut and route all the way around the plate. But the tabs on my saw are too wide for a rabbiting bit, so I'm going to use a straight bit instead and trim the waste off of my throat plate with it standing on edge against the router table fence. Next, we need to cut the blade slot. But if you're going to use this throat plate with your standard blade, you may have a problem getting it to fit over the blade in order to make that first kerf cut. That's because some saws don't allow you to drop the blade down low enough to get the clearance you need. Well, here's a simple solution. Use the outer blade of an 8 inch dado set instead. Install the dado blade and lower it as far as it will go. Now set the throat plate in place and slide the rip fence over it to hold it down for the cutting step. 
Position the fence close to the blade, but be sure it won't cut into the fence. Now start the saw and slowly crank the blade up through the throat plate. An inch or so of height should be all you need. Then switch to your standard saw blade and repeat the process to cut the curve slot to full length. Now if you were going to use this new throat plate for a dado set, like this, you'd be done as soon as you cut the slot for the wide blade. But if you're going to use your throat plate for a standard blade, there's still one more step you have to do. You have to extend that slot behind the blade in order to accommodate the splitter assembly for the saw's guard or a riving knife like this. And to do that, I use this simple crosscut sled. I stick a couple pieces of carpet tape to the sled, then flip my plate upside down and set it down in place over the blade. Make sure the blade spins freely and then press the plate down to the sled. This way I can start the saw and just push the sled forward to extend the curve cut in my throat plate. It's a quick and easy way to extend the blade opening for my riving knife. And once that's done, my new shop made zero clearance throat plate is ready for action. Now if your standard throat plate has a little pin on the back, you can add that to your throat plate with a short piece of metal rod, a little nail, or a screw if you like. These shop made throat plates are one of the best performance enhancements you can make for your table saw. And if you use scrap, they cost you next to nothing. And once you try them out, you'll probably want to keep one on your saw almost all the time. So be sure to make a few for all your blade options. And thanks for watching.